Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and welcome to another episode of Learn Pearl by Doing It. And in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to use arrays in Perl and I'm going to show you how to check if files exist. Um, the code that we're going to develop here is going to come, come in very handy when in future tutorials we're going to look at the bulk processing of files. So I'm in Eclipse and actually I think I'm going to use Eclipse for the majority of these videos because it's a really nice editor to use. Although probably later on when we're looking at Perl Onliners we'll also look at other uh, platforms like um, Sigwin for example. So I'm in Eclipse and I've created a project just like in the last tutorial and I've given it um, a file called main.pl and I'm going to write out the usual stuff here. So I'm going to write use strict, use warnings, and I probably won't do this every tutorial. And I'm going to say sub main, open a curly parenthesis, close the curly parenthesis. But I'll do it here because if you're going to, if you watch these videos in sequence, then hopefully this will kind of help to fix this in your head if I just do this a few times. And then finally I must remember to call the main subroutine. So I say main round bracket semicolon. Now let's suppose that we want this script to check for some reason if a particular file exists. So let's go to Explorer and look for a file. There's this logo.png which I downloaded in an earlier in an earlier um, video. So I'm going to copy the folder that that's in with in Explorer like this and I remember it's called logo.png so now I'll go back to Eclipse and I'm going to say here if and I want to put the name of the file in single quotes like this, two single quotes and paste it in. If you have a long kind of complex string like this that, that may have some kind of funny character in that Perl may try to interpret as having a special meaning it's always good to put it in single quotes because single quotes means don't interpret special characters it's just a literal, literal string whereas within double quotes Perl will try to interpret any special control sequences that, met, that it may think are in there now to actually test if this file exists oh I've, I've still got to put on backslash logo dot png there we go so that's now a, a full file path with the the directory included. And to actually test if this exists, this isn't very intuitive, but I don't use a function, I actually use hyphen f. And actually, the name for these has um, slipped my mind, but uh, there's, a, there's a bunch, or at least a small bunch of different things you can do, like hyphen this, hyphen that. And this is one of the more useful, because hyphen f means check if this file exists or not. So the syntax is that you just have hyphen f and a space and the name of a file that you want to check. So let's say if hyphen f, if exists this particular file, then I'll open a curly bracket and let's put the else clause in as well here, else. And if it exists, I'm going to say print found file backslash n and I'm using double quotes now because I want Perl to interpret backslash n as a special sequence. I want to inter I want it to interpret backslash n as meaning a new line. If the file doesn't exist, let's put um, file not found backslash n like this, semicolon. And now I'll, I'll click run and save it and it says that it's found the file. But if I mangle the file name somehow, then it's going to say file not found. Now one really useful thing to do is to put the file name in a variable because then you can refer to it in your message saying found file such and such or didn't find file such and such. So let's do that. And as in the last tutorial, I'm going to declare a what we call a scalar variable here, which is a variable that just holds one value, whether that's a string or a number or whatever. And I'm going to say my dollar because it's a scalar, it's a single value. And I'll call this file. So that's just 
file is just a variable name that I've just thought of. It's completely arbitrary. And I'm going to say that equals, and let's take this, the stuff in single quotes here, and paste it here, followed by a semicolon. And now, because this variable now refers to this string, or if you like, contains this string, then I can put it here. So I can say dollar $file. And if I run this, the results are the same as before. And it found the file in this case. So now we can say found file. And directly here, actually within the, the string, I can actually use this variable. So I can say found file. And inside the string between the double quotes, I can say dollar $file. That's um, my variable name, which has no special meaning. I could call this absolutely anything. Or we can say file not found. Semi let's put a, a, a colon just for some punctuation and say dollar file. So the punctuation doesn't have special meaning. I'm just putting that there to make it look nice. And I'll have one here as well. So now if we run this, it says found file such and such. So we're using this file name in two different places. And because I've got double quotes on these strings, it will not only interpret this as the new line character, this control sequence backslash n, it will also interpret this variable as, uh, well, it will look at what's in the variable and output that in your string. And this is just a huge, huge time saver in Perl. It's, it's a really nice thing to have. Let's, let's do one more thing in this tutorial, which is I want to show you how to use arrays because often you're going to not want to look at a single file, which isn't much use. You're going to want to look at a whole array of files, a whole list of files in other words. And to do that, first we need to create an array. So again, I'm going to say my, and because this is now an array, I start it with an at sign. So there's no necessarily any real logic here, but I read the at sign as, as array and the dollar, well, I suppose I don't really read at all. So I'd say here, well, I'd say my dollar file, but in this case, I'm, I'm going to say my array files or my files array. And at the point that I'm trying to get across here is uh, it's just that if you have an array, you've got to start it with an at sign like that. And it seems counterintuitive at first, but if you've typed it a few times yourself and seen it work, it, it tends to stick in your head and it's not as bad as you imagine. And let's say my array files equals, and now I use round brackets and a semicolon. And in this round brackets, I can put a comma separated list of files that I want to check. So I'm going to check this one for a start. So let's put that in there. I'll copy it paste in and a comma and I'm gonna let's go to Explorer and see what else is in there so I've got index.html so let's check that as well so I'll um, paste that again and then change this to index.html and let's do control shift F to format that there we go so it's breaking it onto um, onto a new line which is nice and I'll have another one of those, and this time let's make it one that doesn't exist. So I'm going to copy this line and just paste it down here. And this has got to finish with a comma. And let's put in here something like um, missing dot text, which doesn't actually exist. And I'll save that. Now, when you declare arrays in Perl, unlike many languages, you can have a comma after each entry in the array. You can you can type this if you want. So it, it's like literally a comma separated list, but you're also allowed to have an extra comma there. And when you first see it, you tend to think, wow, that's that's rubbish. It just looks stupid if you're familiar with other, other languages. But it's actually, it saves you a lot of trouble because very, very often you, you're going to be copying and pasting lines in an array. And it actually takes up a lot of time sometimes to remember to delete the comma after the last entry, especially if you're producing an array programmatically somehow. But um, so I, th this is actually quite a good idea. And according to what I read, this is considered best practice to actually put the comma in there. But if you miss it out, it's also good. 
Now we want to iterate through these files. We want to we want to go to each one and check if it exists. So this code here is going to be in some kind of loop. And what I'm going to do to iterate through an array is I'll say for each. That's a keyword in Perl space. And now I'll declare a variable that's going to be set to each of these files in turn, each of these file names in turn. And because this variable is going to hold a single value, which is one file name at a time, it starts with a dollar. And I'm going to call this file. And now I put round brackets there and a semi, actually no semicolon, forget that. I'm going to put round brackets there and in the round brackets I'm going to put array files like that. And after that I open a curly bracket and then I put the curly bracket, the closing curly bracket down here. So um, did I do something wrong there? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, because I use use strict, I've got to declare this variable as well. So I need to say here my dollar file. So we're declaring a variable and we're saying set this dollar file to each of the files in this array in turn. And to demonstrate that, let's put here print double quote and dollar dollar file backslash n and click save and I, I heartily recommend I'll put the semicolon in there but I strongly recommend building up your Perl scripts a little bit at, at a time and doing stuff like this to check that you get what you expect at every stage and I think that's a, a good programming practice in general so let's run this and I run it and we have all the files being output here and then I've got some output here as well from this block here now I'm going to take this and do control X and paste it over this and I'm going to get rid of this line here and then I'll do control shift F to format my code so that it indents stuff nicely within for each and within the if statement it's also indented and if I now run this let's click save we get um, found these two files and then we didn't find this file so that's almost it for this tutorial. There's one little thing that I want to mention, which I'm sure I'll mention again, which is that Perl can, well, or actually the console, in uh, especially in Unix and Linux, I think, can buffer your output. So it might save up these prints and only print them all after a while. I'm not really sure if, if that can actually happen when you have a new line. As far as I recall, it, it does, it does, it can and does happen. Um, so you might find that your output doesn't appear immediately and usually I, if I tell my script to output some text I want to see it immediately and you can turn off output buffering by putting at the top of your program dollar and a bar character like uh, well I have no idea where a bar is on my computer now that I look at it bear with me one second Let's find the bar. Here it is, uh, and set that. This is this is one of the special variables in Perl that are absolutely notorious because they're totally unintuitive. You've got no way of knowing what this is, and there is kind of a spelt out version of this. But to tell you the truth, I can't remember even what it is. And I'm going to just write here dollar pipe or dollar bar equals one and that, set, that turns off output buffering and although this looks really unintuitive you don't actually need to use this kind of thing very often and it just if you write a lot of these scripts it just becomes ingrained in your head that you write use strict use warnings dollar bar equals one and hey presto and now you should see the output immediately it's produced and it will, will not save it up so that's it for this time. A lot of stuff in Perl can be done in multiple ways and a lot of stuff doesn't seem very intuitive. But the thing about Perl is it's nothing if not useful and whatever you learn and whatever you can remember, it can really, really help you to get stuff done, especially if you're de dealing with files or databases or downloading stuff on the internet. Or you, you can even create dynamic websites using Perl. You can do all kinds of stuff or kind of system administrative type tasks, Perl can really help you and every bit you know can help you. It's like going to Italy and learning a few Italian words. Every, every little bit you learn of the language is useful. So don't feel overwhelmed by Perl and don't feel that you have to learn everything because it's, it's all great. 
And I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.